that Saudi government officials, not just wealthy Saudi hardliners, but high-level diplomats and intelligence officers employed by the kingdom helped the hijackers both financially and logistically. And if the Saudi government did indeed help finance and train the hijackers, well, that, my friends, that is an act of war. And I'm so glad to see the truth finally beginning to surface. Senator Rand Paul has just introduced legislation called the Transparency for the Families of 9-11 Act. And that would force the Obama administration to release the 28 pages. Over a decade ago, a bipartisan congressional committee investigated the 9-11 attacks and wrote a report. 28 pages from that report have never been released to the public. We're here today to call for the release of those 28 pages. The survivors, civilian heroes, and families of the victims of September 11 terrorist attacks, some of whom are here today, deserve the full truth. We cannot let page after page of blanked out documents be obscured behind a veil, leading these families to wonder if there is additional information surrounding these horrible acts. So there you have it. Rand Paul thinks that we all have the right and that the 9-11 victims' families have the right to see what's in those documents, no matter how embarrassing or how incriminating it might be to George W. Bush. So what do you say there, W? Why don't you let us see what's in those 28 pages? After all, you've got nothing to hide, right? I mean, either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. It was almost as if it were a planned implosion. It just pancaked. Well, pancaking almost like a precision implosion. It's reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed, destroyed by well-placed dynamite to knock it down. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. Well, here at a supermarket in Toledo, you can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. A lot of you have been following my progress using Super Male Vitality. The last 19 weeks has been an incredible experience. I was feeling a little down and lethargic during the holidays, and none of the supplements that I was taking were doing any good. That's when my longtime friend from high school, Alex Jones, introduced me to Super Male Vitality. I was a little skeptical at first. Not only would I have the energy to work out and go to the gym, but it, it was actually the changes were happening to my body uh, a lot more rapidly. My whole mood, my libido, everything, had completely changed. The concentrated organic herbs, they stimulate your natural systems to produce the natural hormones that you need. I just really wanted to, to bulk up and hit it hard and I went in for about the first five weeks and was lifting heavy weight and just really hitting it hard and I gained 20 pounds of muscle immediately. Since that, I've decided I was gonna lose some weight and slim down. I just changed up my workout a little bit and 35 pounds came off. Folks, this is not a joke. This is not a gimmick, it's real. Super Male Vitality, available at InfoWarsLife.com. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Most forms of vitamin B12 are highly processed and synthetic and cannot be properly absorbed by the body. That's why for real results, so many are having to turn to painful B12 injections, which are known to have higher absorption rates. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. 
Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12, methylcobalamin, the same kind used in B12 injections, and adenosyl cobalamin. Secret 12 is simply taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Don't take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Discover the secret. Secret 12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. Brain Force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of Brain Force. One of the worst things with most energy products is it's not sustainable, right? You're gonna crash afterwards. This has a bunch of different antioxidants and compounds and polyphenols. Everybody's on these drugs to knock their brain out because the brain's so fried. We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. Still damaging your brain. You will find Brain Force, Survival Shield X2, and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. I'm Leanne McAdoo with InfoWars.com, reporting here from Times Square. I am standing next to Rudy Dent. He's a 32-year veteran of the New York City Fire Department. He's worked as well with the New York City Police Department. And you retired right after 9-11. He was there on 9-11. He saw World Trade Center Tower 7 come down. Rudy, tell us about what happened that day. Well, I was off that day, and I, got a, I received a call at home, and uh, I got to see both buildings come down on TV. I jumped on my motorcycle, I did about 120 miles an hour across the Tappan Zee, I reported to my firehouse, and then I uh, got my gear, uh, a bunch of us got together, we commandeered a, a mail truck and we made our way down to the, to the site. Uh, at that time, World, uh, Building 7 was still up. Uh, I saw Building 7 come down. Uh, my fellow firefighters who were there, they did that involuntary jerk when a loud explosion goes off, you know, you, you can't help it, and they did. Uh, I'm a, a Vietnam veteran too, so I kind of didn't jump like they did, but uh, it was, there was an explosion. The building did come down in complete classical uh, controlled demolition. It came down on its own footprint. There's no question about that. As a matter of fact, uh, Richard Gage from Architects and Engineers has completely handled that from his area of expertise. Okay. Now we heard uh, rumblings, things that the fire department was saying that they were overhearing Larry Silverstein talking about, uh, talking to his insurance company of whether or not he should have the building pulled. Um, in your professional opinion, was the building pulled? Well, let me say this. In the New York City Fire Department, I, as I said, I had 32 years there. I was a chauffeur and I was also a trained fire marshal. A fire marshal is considered an expert witness in court. He's like a, a forensic detective. He has the power to administer the oath, take testimony, and issue a subpoena. That's a lot of power. And he's, he's a highly trained investigative uh, 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 person in his area of expertise, in arson. And we have no term that I know of that says pulling buildings. That's not our area of expertise. We've never done that. We don't do that. So for him to say that, I don't know where he pulled that out of, but it, it, it's just not part of our uh, operations, okay? Right, so the fire department doesn't have the training to pull a building, to demo a building like that. We're not trained to do that. We've never done that in my 32 years. I know of no evolution whatsoever that does that. And then talk to me a little bit, obviously, as a professional in the fire department for 30 plus years, they're saying that, uh, blaming it on office fires, just a few office fires. Well, if it wasn't so serious a situation, that would be completely laughable. That is ridiculous. First of all, our guys were up there. They were calling for additional hand lines to mop up the isolated pockets of fire. And let me just 
explain one thing. Never in the history of the world, never in the history of high-rise skyscrapers has ever a uh, skyscraper ever come down because of fire. And I'm talking massive fire, and you know the reason why? Because fire does not burn by itself hot enough to compromise and melt steel. What we had in the World Trade Center, and I saw myself, was molten lava-like pockets of molten steel. All right, I spent the night on the pile searching for bodies, and I saw that with my own eyes. So who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe a bunch of government bureaucrats or my fellow brothers, which I lost 343 guys that day? And I lost Tommy O'Hagan, Bruce Van Hines, and Kenny Kumpel. And I can never forget that. I think of that before I go to bed. I think about it the first thing in the morning when I wake up. And it's in honor of them and their family that I will continue to do everything I can to make the rest of the world wake up to the fact that this was a false flag operation. Right. And now, as you're as you're out there with, with professionals who s understand what it is that they're seeing, what were you all saying to each other when you're looking at this molten lava? Well, we were overcome with grief, first of all. We lost 343 guys. We, didn't, we weren't talking about that. If you, if you look at the numerous video, videos, you'll see the guys bent over in incredible grief. One of the things that we have in the fire department is an incredible brotherhood. We do what we do, an aggressive interior attack, because we believe in each other. We know that our guys will pull us out if we get into trouble. And if we lose somebody, it's, 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 we're, we're family. We're, we're very close. We know each other's families. We know each other's children. And one of the things that I've been privy to is, is uh, you know, I'm proud of is that I, see, the New York City Fire Department is a calling. It brings out the best in guys, you know, I mean, uh, in men who put their lives on the line to save other people's lives. New York City Fire Department is probably the least integrated of all the services, right? When I first came into the firehouse, it was all heavy brogues and stuff. But those same guys, I've seen them bent over giving mouth to mouth to little black children that they've just pulled out of a building. And typically when you die or when you you cease to, to, to start uh, uh, to breathe, you throw up, and they, they gave them mouth to mouth. You know, I've seen incredible acts of heroism. I love my fellow firefighters. We love each other, and I'm dedicated to exposing this false flag that took their lives. What do your what do your comrades say to you? What do you what do people say to you? Because we've we've tried to talk to some people, and of course, you know they have to worry about their pension and things like that. They cannot comment, and I'm retired. But while I was on, I was approached by the news, and I I deferred from commenting for two reasons. First of all, I I was at uh, 1993, the first bombing. And I saw that I stood shoulder to shoulder with the FBI while they forage for little paint chips. And with their forensic science, they can take that paint chip and tell you the make and model of the vehicle that it belonged to. All right? And, and I, that was a bombing. This was a bombing. Uh, what did you think about them taking all of the debris away so quickly? That was a crime in and of itself because the classical thing that any investigator is taught is protect the crime scene. And NIST and the 9-11 Commission lie to the public. I mean, you cannot be that stupid. You cannot be that stupid. In law, as a former police officer, every crime or offense has a degree of me mental culpability. Either you knowingly, intentionally, recklessly, or negligently committed the act. And the mere fact that there were obviously, uh, uh, the definition of a conspiracy is when two or more people acting in concert knowingly commit an offense or a, or, or a crime, all right, uh, uh, a misdemeanor or a felony an offense. That is the definition of a conspiracy. Was this a conspiracy? Absolutely. Yes, it was. And those people need to go to jail for treason.
Is there anything else that you want to say to anyone out there, anyone who might be wanting to come forward but they're scared? I want to thank you.